If you came here for a really quick tutorial and just want to know the basic transitions I'm going to be using for these four clips, it's going to be this as follows. You're going to zoom out, then rotate right on the first clip, rotate right, then swipe down on the second clip, swipe down, then zoom out on the third clip, and zoom out, then swipe left for the fourth clip. Feel free to look up individual tutorials on those transitions I mentioned, and then basically you could just come back here and see how to put it all together. Hi friends, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are finally going to be getting to my bouncy After Effects tutorial, uh, where you can learn how to make the dark ray edit you see here in the background, and a similar style to some of these edits you'll see on screen. Um, but before we kick things off, just know that my general process, first I organize all of my clips and put them to the proper beats of whatever audio I'm using, and I do that in Final Cut Pro. Uh, then when it's kind of like this flat edit, no transitions or anything, that's when I bring that video into After Effects and break all of those individual clips back up again. When doing this, I ended up with 16 individual clips that I would then be adding transitions to. Um, and keep in mind that a lot of After Effects edits are the same edit looped for a second time in the middle, so you really only need to edit halfway. Okay, let me just say this quickly. We're gonna use a lot of null layers in this tutorial, so if you're not familiar with null layers, it might be a good time to kind of watch a tutorial first on null layers. Basically, a lot of what we're doing is gonna be using null layers to tell our clips what we want them to do. Um, yeah, I'll kind of have a diagram here so you can follow that. So first thing you're going to want to do is just pre-compose your clip and add motion tile. Um, and I'm also recording this the next day, so my voice probably sounds different. Awesome. But yeah, always make sure before you start and add your transitions, you're pre-composing and adding motion tile because it'll save you later. Uh, but then you're going to want to add a null layer and parent that first video clip portion you have to that first null layer. And you just use the little pick whip tool to do so. After that, you're going to add a keyframe for 350 at the start of your clip and 100 at the end of your clip. And again, because we're doing this on the null layer, it's non-destructive, works out better in the end. Uh, make sure you easy ease them as well by hitting F9 if you're on Mac, and then go into the graph editor and make your graph look something like mine. doesn't have to be exact, but I find this works out the best for later when we add motion blur. After that, you could preview the zoom you've got so far. Again, it's a zoom out at the start of the clip. That's the first transition. Then we're gonna add another null layer, which on Mac, the shortcut is Shift, uh, Command, Alt, and Y. And then you're gonna drag that above the first null and the second clip. And parent that second clip to the second null and the first null to the second null. It's confusing, but just follow what I do. Then you want to add four keyframes on rotation, uh, one for zero at the start of the first clip, then 75 at the end, then negative 75 at the beginning of the second clip, and zero around the middle. Having those opposite rotation values works out so that the rotation actually looks like it goes together. If you did two 75 um, positive values, it would just look like they're going opposite directions. And like I said before, make sure your clips are pre-composed because I forgot to do that for my first clip and I had already parented it and it messed me up later. And again, make sure you're always easy using your keyframes, which is hitting F9 on Mac. Um, and make your speed graphs look similar to mine. I know they're really small. I don't know why it looks this way sometimes. I should have zoomed in. I'm sorry, please don't kill me. But we're starting to look good. So next, this is optional. Um, I've seen some people in other videos add a second layer of scaling to make their first zoom transition look even more smooth. So this is totally optional. If you want to follow me, you can. Uh, you're basically doing the opposite uh, zoom movement. 
than you originally did, but you ease the keyframes at the opposite side. So it kind of works out where, I'm not even gonna try to explain that, but I'll link a tutorial that I followed before where somebody used this technique. <laughs> And when you're done, feel free to preview that transition. Looking good. Now we're gonna start on our second clip for transitions. And make sure it's pre-composed first, like we've said, and add motion tile. I forgot to do that and it messed me up. <laughs> so for this one, we're gonna start with the rotation first since that's what we ended the first clip with. So it's gonna be negative 75 at the start and zero in the middle. So make sure you add those keyframes. And that's rotation. Then hit S on your keyboard and let's add some scaling. So you're gonna add a keyframe for 50 at the start of your clip and then 100 at the middle of your clip. It could be the end. And then as always, easy ease your keyframes and edit your graph to uh, look similar to mine. And preview it if you'd like. Then next up, we're gonna hit P for position. We're gonna add some keyframes here. Um, add one in the middle for the current position and then go to the end and we're going to move it at the end. And you're going to drag this down going to be a swiping down kind of transition. Feel free to drag it as much as you'd like. I just did about half of my clip, uh, the height. Then of course, easy ease your keyframes and edit your graphs. Look at similar to mine. Next, you're gonna pre-comp your third clip and add motion tile. No surprises there. Then add a null layer, parent the null layer, or your clip to the null layer, and make sure your motion blur is enabled as always. Uh, we're gonna add some position keyframes first, current position in the middle of the clip, and then go to the beginning and drag your clip up. Uh, this will follow that previous swiping down transition. Then easy ease and edit your graphs. Per usual. After that, hit S for scale. We're gonna add some keyframes. Add one for 100 at the beginning and then 50 at the end of your clip. And then easy ease and edit. Then we're gonna add our second null layer and drag that above the first null and that other clip. And this is the last clip I'll be showing you. I have more in here obviously, but feel free to uh, watch for reference, but you know, do whatever you want to your clips really. It doesn't have to be this exactly. Get creative. I know y'all are so creative. Then parent your fourth clip to that new null layer and then um, the other null to that new null layer. Just follow me if it's confusing. Add four scale keyframes and do that as follows. So you're gonna add one for 70, then 150 at the end of that first clip and easy ease and edit those first two keyframes. And then you're gonna add the other two frames for 200 at the beginning of the next clip and then 100 uh, towards the middle or end of the next one. And easy ease and edit as well. And then preview all your work so far. Actually, we're not done. We're gonna hit P on our keyboard and we're gonna add some position keyframes. Go to the middle, add a current frame, and then go to the end and drag your clip to the left. Uh, this is just me making a left swipe transition. So the next clip would obviously have to follow that as well. Uh, but easy ease your clips and edit, and that's all your work for now. And feel free to mix it up, do whatever you wanna do for your other clips. But yeah, I added some extra glow for some of the beats that I wasn't doing anything on. Um, I rendered it and then I brought it into Final Cut Pro, picked coloring, and here we are. <laughs>